Hello everybody and welcome to my third ever wedlock on the channel and that is going to be of Pokemon Heart Gold. I've been talking about it since the start of Pokemon Platinum so it's really no surprise on the game that I'm going to be playing next and it is going to be Heart Gold as you can see. Now I'm going to basically just uh, skim through all of the beginning parts because everybody's seen it before. There's no real reason to talk about it and while we're doing this I'm going to go over the rules I'm going to be doing for this series. Now, like all series, I am going to be doing this in a wedlock challenge, and this, I'm not going to explain exactly how a wedlock works, because I'm sure you're familiar of, of it by now, and if you're not, there will be a detailed video in the description, actually in the first paragraph of the description, by the person that created the wedlock challenge, Maryland, and if you ever want to know how wedlock works, you can watch that, and if you don't want to watch it, you should be able to pick up what the game's all about. So, alongside that, to make the game harder, I will be playing with extra rules. These extra rules are as follows, and I guess I'll get into those here in a second. So, are you a boy or are you a girl? Now, I have been playing as the girl character in Platinum. I played as the male in Omega Ruby, and I'm going to play as the male in this game. I don't like Lyra, personally. I've never liked Lyra. I will never like Lyra, so I'm never going to play as her. So, we're going to play as the boy, and the tech speed is extremely slow because I can't change it yet. Actually, I probably could have. I don't know, but... And I've named my character Chroma every time, and I said I was going to name myself something different next time, based around the naming theme. I've given it some thought, and there's not really anything that I want to name my character besides Chroma, so I am going to name myself Chroma like I always do. There was a really good opportunity for the last one. The naming theme was Roller Coasters. I should have played as the boy and named myself Walt, but I missed that opportunity, so... Uh, yeah, I guess um, that's never going to happen. The series is over now. So, I'm going to get into the rules of the series. So, the f uh, first thing is I may only use three healing items, well, three items per pair per battle. This doesn't apply to Pokeballs, of course. So, that means if I'm fighting a trainer with a Hoot Hoot and a Caterpie, I'm only allowed to heal three times between the two Pokemon that are out. So, that makes it a lot harder. Like, 11 of the 12 deaths in... The Platinum Woodlock were from the healing limit, If I like right off the top of my head. Like, if I could heal spam, I would have only lost one Pokemon. It's a big difference. It makes the game so much harder and much more enjoyable for me to play. Another thing I'll be playing with is a level limit. A level limit is the next gym leader's highest level Pokemon, and for the Elite 4, it will be 50. So, the level limit for the series is going to be 13, 17, 19, 25... 31, 34, 35, 41, and 50. Now, you can do Morty or Jasmine in any order that you'd like. Now, for the sake of the series and for the sake of the level limit, I always use a frame 19, by the way. But for the sake of the series and for the sake of the level limit, I will be doing Morty first because it will make the game more difficult because his level limit is actually lower than Jasmine's and we would have to fight Team Rocket and all of that stuff with lower level Pokemon, which will make the game a little bit harder. It shouldn't be that big of a deal. And for the Elite Four, well, and after that it will be 41 for Claire, and 50 for the Elite Four. Now, in Kanto, it's very different, and the levels are kind of strange. So I'm just going to say for right now that I'm not allowed to pass level 60 before Blue in Kanto. That's subject to change. It's not cement or anything like that, so we might change that. So let me go ahead and look at my trainer ID. I'm just curious what we have. My trainer ID is 12175. Now, this is actually pretty good because normally um, my trainer card determines my starter. If it's 1, 2, or 3, I choose the grass type. If it's 4, 5, or 6, I choose the fire type. And if it's 7, 8, or 9, I choose the water type. In Omega Ruby, I chose the water type. And in Platinum, I chose the grass type. So no matter what my ID number was in this playthrough, I was going to choose the fire type. And if I went by the ID, we would have got the fire type anyways. So that's pretty cool. Uh, the fire type starter in this generation is my least favorite of the three, and it's because it's the easiest most of the time, so it really doesn't matter. Um, another clause that I will be using, well, another rule that I will be using is something I made up. It's called previous game clause. Now, here's how it works if you are new to the channel. Basically, previous game clause prohibits me from using any Pokemon that I used for a long period of time in a series of mine. This includes the Omega Ruby Woodlock and the Platinum Woodlock. So any Pokemon that I use for a long period of time in those challenges will not be able to be caught, and they just flat out do not count in any way. So it basically prevents me from using the same Pokemon again and adds to more variety. 
sure it can be exploited to get something better, kind of like in the Slowpoke well, I'm guaranteed a Slowpoke, but that's just uniqueness. It will make me so I'm going to get to use something different. And some people might not like that. It's really not that big of a deal. The Pokemon that I am not allowed to use are as follows. If you do not want spoilers for the past two series and think you might watch them sometime, skip this part. I will have a little thing or whatever in the top left that tells you what timestamp to skip, to skip to. And I'll give you a couple seconds to do that right now. Also, don't check the description because those Pokemon are listed in the description as well. Okay, the Pokemon that I am not allowed to use in any means, including their pre-evolutions and their evolutions, are Dustox, Slacking, Manectric, Gyarados, Hariyama, Ninjask, Ninetales, Crobat, Ambipom, Vaporeon, and Gliscor. Oh, and, ha and Houndoom. So, those are the Pokemon that I am not allowed to use, and I'm not al allowed to use any of their pre-evolutions either. So, they're basically like Dupes Claws. I'm not allowed to catch them, they don't count. Straight up. Okay, those are the Pokemon that I'm not allowed to use, so this is what the point you should have skipped to. And, uh, I guess it's time to get our starter. There is more um, rules and clauses to go over, I'll do that after we pick our starter. And it'll also let us get into the nickname theme. So, I've actually done 2500 soft resets on my Soul Silver for a shiny. A Johto starter, and I haven't gotten it quite yet. Uh, maybe one of these will be shiny. That'd be pretty insane. Of course not, but I've been seeing these guys for quite a while. Anyways, there's Grass type starter, Chikorita, my favorite of the three. Then there's Totodile, which I also like, and Cyndaquil. The only, f well, the only fire. We haven't used the fire type in a wedlock yet. So, well, we're gonna. I'm sorry if you heard that. Heard that thud. There was some loud noise outside. I'm not sure. Anyways, our starter for the Pokemon Heart Gold wedlock is going to be Cyndaquil. Let's grab him. And maybe it'll be female. That'll be pretty interesting. Now, this is also something that I've been looking forward to. Pokemon follow you in this game, which means the world to me. I love that. It adds for personality. Like, it just makes it so much fun to interact with them. So, we're about to see what gender this Cyndaquil is going to be. Let's see. It is male. I figured it would be. But, who knows? Maybe we'd get a female starter again, like we did with Aftershock the Grottle in the Platinum Woodlock. Anyways, guys, so I'm going to need a nickname for this, and that's a good time to get into my nicknaming theme. My nicknaming theme, thanks to Maryland, he helped me suggest it. Well, he helped suggest it and give me a good idea for it. And it's kind of common. Everybody kind of uses this naming theme. But it's going to be a little bit different, so let me pull it up right here. It is food dishes. Now, yeah, basically food. However, I made a big list of food that is unique. There's a lot of really cool names in this list, and I will probably butcher the pronunciations for so many names. If I do, correct me, I will try my best. I have Indian foods, French foods, British foods, even American foods, there's a couple common names in there. Japanese foods, Italian foods, Mexican foods, and a couple Vietnamese foods. So, I'm gonna go ahead and scam, skin this list for a perfect name, or at least as close as I can get perfect for a Typhlosion, and I will be right back. Alright everybody, I decided on a nickname for our Cyndaquil here. It is an Indian food, and apparently it's a type of curry. I've wrote down a couple, uh, I've wrote down very, very brief descriptions of what the food is, so I might get some food wrong, but the name is spelled correctly, and it might be like an alteration of a name, like, I think this one was, but I'm going to name this Cyndaquil. Gobi. So, it's apparently a type of Kirby. Kirby. Apparently, it's, it's a type of curry Indian cuisine. So, we have Gobi the Cyndaquil, which is awesome. So, I'm going to be talking to my Pokemon a lot throughout this playthrough. It's one of my favorite features of Heart Gold and Soul Silver. It lets you communicate and interact and bond with your Pokemon so much better. So, let's see what our first communication is with Gobi. Gobi does not seem used to its name yet. Yeah, I would struggle to get used to that name too, buddy. It's okay. So, uh, the Professor's Aid is going to give us some potions, which have come in handy a little bit, I suppose. Okay, so back into the rules. The next clause is Shiny Claws. Everybody plays with this. I don't know why you wouldn't. Basically, this means any shiny Pokemon I get may be captured and used no matter what. So... Basically, it's an extra Pokemon. It won't happen. I've only ever found two 1 in 8,192 Shinies before. And it will not happen. I can guarantee you that I will not find a Shiny during this series. But they are 1 in 8,192 in this game. So maybe we will get lucky. Who knows? 
Uh, did I turn text speed on fast? I think I did. So we have to go talk to our mom. So while we're doing that, I can go over the rest of the rules. The next rule we're playing with is Species Clause, which is a glorified dupes clause. Basically, any Pokemon that we have caught, we are not allowed to use their... We're not allowed to catch their evolutions or themselves at all. Basically, once we've caught a Hoodoo, we can't get a Noctowl anymore. So that encounter does not count anymore, which is pretty nice. It helps you get more of a diverse group of Pokemon. I would never play without it. I... Don't think it makes the game easier, I just think it makes it so you can use more diverse Pokemon. You get a Machop, and it dies, you're done. You get no more. Like, that's it. So, you get a different chance to use different Pokemon, basically. Next up is Gift Claws. This is basically another reason I'm playing with it, is because it adds more uniqueness. There's a lot of Pokemon that I would never use because they are hard to get, because you can get something else before them in their specific area. Gift Claws is any Pokemon that are given to me are free Pokemon, whether they're caught in the same area as something else or not. The Pokemon that apply to this are the Dratini in the Dragon's Den, the Tyrogue in Mount Mortar, the Eevee in Goldenrod City, the Togepi Egg, and I believe that's it. Yeah. So the Togepi Egg, the Eevee, the Tyrogue, and the Dratini. Tyrogue is one of the Pokemon that I'm referring to. I'd never get that, and it, I think it'd be really cool to use. So, hopefully we don't find a shiny Pokemon uh, before we get our Pokeballs. I would cry, and you'll probably never see this. You'll probably never see another video from me again. But, uh, please don't do that to me. What's Gobi think? Gobi looks like it wants to lead. Well, go right ahead. I used to always do this. Put it up front like that. Lead. It's funny. Never mind. Alright, so I'm not going to really cut out wild battles at the beginning, I don't think. Um, I tend to cut out wild Pokemon battles. None of these Pokemon count, by the way. Um, nothing counts until... The challenge doesn't start till we get our Pokeballs, so that's when that starts. And the last clause that I'm going to be playing with is I'm allowing genderless Pokemon. Now, I've done numerous wedlocks, and I'm always sad that genderless Pokemon don't really get any love. And I played with this clause in my Platinum Wedlock, and I ended up using two genderless Pokemon. They didn't make it very far, but they helped us out quite a bit, and I really enjoyed my time with Cosmotron and Millennium. And... I am probably always going to play with this clause. There's very few genderless Pokemon in the game, and I want to give every one of them a chance. So, they're allowed. I flip a coin if I run into them. Heads, they're males. And tails, they're females. And I would keep track of this by PC placement. I'll have a box for males, and I'll have a box for female Pokemon. So, we can't pick that Apricorn quite yet. We go, we're going to need to get the Apricorn box up ahead. But once we reach Cherry Grove City, we can get a very, very helpful item. And this guy is going to be the one that gives us to us. You're a rookie trainer, aren't you? I can tell. It's okay. Everyone's a rookie at some point. If you like, I can teach you a few things. Okay, then follow me. I talk very, very, very fast. I run very, very, very fast. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. I forgot that you weren't wearing running shoes. I'll try to go as slow as possible. So, um, so keep up. Yeah. All right. This is the Pokemon Center. They heal your Pokemon. No time at all. You'll be relying on them a lot. So you better learn about them. This thing right here. The, this thing with the blue roof. Yeah, yeah. This is the Pokemon. They sell Pokeballs for catching wild Pokemon and other useful items. Right. This area down here is Route 30. It's up this way. The trainers will be battling with their Pokemon out there. If you want to go a little further, you'll see Mr. Pokemon's house. Yeah. That's where you need to go. So you better go. And this, 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 this right here. This place is really, really cool. Right here. Yeah, yeah. This, this, this blue thing. This is the sea, as you can see. See, Pokemon are only found on water. Yeah. Some Pokemon are only found on water. You know what I'm saying? And then I'm here. I know. I'm just keep up. I'm a really, really fast old man. Yeah. Here, this is my house. For your effort, keeping up with me, I'll give you my running shoes. They're still warm. That's disgusting. No, they're brand new. They're, what? They're, they're still warm. No, I gotcha. They're brand new. All right. So, it's really cool that you can um, toggle them to be always on. I don't normally use that. I hold down B the entire time I play the game anyways, so we can't actually buy Pokeballs yet, I don't think, but I suppose we can go and see. I don't think you can. That might be a thing. I'm not completely sure. Yeah, we can't quite yet. Um, Poisoning doesn't kill you in this game. That was stopped in Ruby, Sapphire, and Emerald, right? Okay. Um. Oh, man. <laughs> Here he comes again. <laughs> I mean, I forgot about one thing. This is another token for me. Take it. The guy Gent loaded the... What? The guy Gent? Gent. Never mind. I'm stupid. Anyways, he gives us the town map, which we'll probably never use, so... I, I don't know. I might use that to determine if I've gotten a Pokemon in a certain area or not. So I said I wasn't going to cut out wild battles. I'm going to, because they're kind of a waste of time. I'll probably fight them, too, to get Gobi up a little bit. So we have a better shot at beating our rival uh, up ahead in a little bit. So... Uh, what do you have to say? Oh, you're wearing the running shoes. They make you feel like you're flying, don't they? But beware of wild Pokemon and trainers. When you run, the noise will attract them. Yeah. So basically, if you run, um, you have a higher chance of being found by wild Pokemon, basically. So that's why I normally have them toggled off, so I don't have to keep pushing it over and over again. I can just stop holding down B. It's a nice little feature, and I can see why people like it, but I've never really had a use for it. 
So talking to this guy in this house will give you the apricorn box, which will help us get some apricorns. And seeing that that's normally not a problem for me. Uh, I normally don't mess with this in a regular playthrough because I basically sit around and play it all day 24-7 and I'd never really get any time to do daily events. But seeing as how uh, this is going to be a series on my channel, I can do this and have Kurt make Pokeballs for me. And basically, I can actually get them before I beat the game. Basically. So, I, that, I don't know. In a Nuzlocke or Wedlock, I don't play the game that fast, but... As I was saying, um, I still, I don't keep track of it, I think. I think that's what I was talking about. I don't know. I fought that Rattata. It got, um, Gobi almost to level 6. I think right here you can find something on the ground. I think there's a potion right out here. At least there is in Crystal, because I watch Worcester speed speedrun these games quite a bit. It's one of my favorite things to watch. If you guys like watching him, let me know. Uh, he's pretty, pretty funny. I don't know. Uh, there's probably a hidden item around there or something. I just don't know where it's at. So, right here we can grab a pink apricorn. A PNK apricorn. The last games they had to do this in, I think black and white fixed that. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I'm pretty sure these were the last games before black and white. Uh, yeah. Yeah. No, these came before platinum, didn't they? I don't remember. I, I don't think they did. These came out in 2011, yeah. I don't know. Uh, clearly, I don't know my timeline here. You must be Chroma. It was me who sent the email to Professor Elm earlier. Okay, yeah, so basically I skipped most of the story. There's really not a story here. Basically, if you've never played the games before, Professor Elm was like, Oh, this guy, my acquaintance, this acquaintance of, my, acquaintance, this acqu acquaintance of mine called me and said, I have a Pokemon egg for you, so you need to go get it from the sky. And then, okay, so you need a Pokemon to go get this egg. So here's a new Pokemon, your own Pokemon, yeah. And then you go get the egg for Professor Elm, and then... Professor Oak's here, and he's all like, You have a Pokemon. This is a rare Pokemon. It's awesome. And he gives you the Pokedex. Yeah. And then your journey starts. So it's kind of an interesting start. But very old games if you've played Gold and Silver. So I don't really see why you wouldn't know the story of this. Anyways, we get the Pokedex from Professor Oak there. And basically, you go on your quest to complete the Pokedex. Or in this case, beat the game without very many Pokemon dying. Hard Gold and Soul Silver are hard games to do a wedlock on, I've been told. So, anyways, Mr. Pokemon there has healed up our Pokemon, or our Gobi, anyways. And we got Professor Oak's phone number. And when we leave the house, Pro Professor Elm's gonna be like, It's a disaster! What should I do? Oh no, please get back here now! Because us, a young child, are gonna do something about it. You know what I'm saying? Anyways, um, we still don't have Pokeballs yet. Okay, honestly, I don't remember what I was saying before I did that. I fought a... Radita and it got Gobi to level 6, and I just realized we never checked Gobi out, so... Gobi has a relaxed nature, which is... pretty terrible. I'm pretty sure Typhlosion's pretty quick. At least it doesn't lower special attack, so... that's pretty cool. I'm gonna go back to Mr. Pokemon's house. house. I believe he will heal us up. I'm not 100% sure. He doesn't heal us up, so that's just dandy. Uh, we could lose to our rival, which would be unfortunate, and I don't personally count that. However, I've never had it come up where I would have to actually go on with a Pokemon that has actually died, but I've never just, I've just never fought a rival at the beginning of the game and had my Pokemon die. Didn't we pick this? Or did it grow back because the day ticked over? I don't think that's how that works. I just must have forgot to pick it. Anyways, here's a green Apricorn. Oh, actually, let me check. If I've got two green Apricorns that grew back, which is kind of freaky, I'm probably just losing my mind here. No, I do! That Apricorn grew back in, like, five minutes. That's crazy. All right, well, Gobi, Gobi, what do you have to say? Gobi seems to want to return to the lab. Yeah, that's where we're headed, buddy. Don't worry. You're not going back there forever, though. You're mine. Forever. Uh, anyways, we can go inside Pokemon Center and heal up. Yeah, anyways, when we left, Mom, um, Professor, not Professor, uh, Mr. Pokemon's house, I did notice that when Elm called us that the day did tick over. See, it was six minutes ago the day ticked over. I think that Apricorn grew back within a couple of minutes. That's crazy. I've never seen that happen before. Anyways, we've got a fight coming up, so there's not much else we can do except fight him. Let's go. <laughs> you got a Pokemon at the lab? What a waste. That's a Pokemon that's too good for a wimp like you. Don't you get what I'm saying? Well, I too have a good Pokemon. And I'll show you what I mean. First rival battle against rival... I don't know his name yet. We're about to find out. Pokemon Heart Gold Wedlock. Passerby boy. First up is his only Pokemon, and that's Totodile. 
Water type, level 5. Let's go, Gobi. Alright, so I don't know why I did all of that for the first fight, but I do that for every major fight. I get into it. That's I, I'm very passionate about these challenges, and I've always done that. Even before I started YouTube, I would do that to myself in my room. I'm serious. I was meant to do this. Anyways, it's basically a tackle fest. He could kill us with a crit. That would be unfortunate. We do have potions, so if it gets to that point. Eh, a crit would actually kill me at this point. I don't like that. I don't want to risk it. I don't want to risk losing the challenge right now and having to do this entire recording over. Somebody use healing item number one. A potion on Gobi. Alright, what's this Totodile going to do? Leer. Okay. Uh, a crit would kill. Me, would have killed me at that stage. I just want to play it safe, because I really don't want to take this recording over again. I think it went pretty well. So, alright, Totodile's going to leer again, and this fight's over. Sorry to tell you, passerby boy. Your days have been numbered, and I just counted down the last number. I used that, like, a couple episodes ago in Platinum. It was funny to me at the first time, but now it's, it's, it's an old joke. Anyways, Gobi's going to grow to level 7, which is sweet, and I believe Gobi will earn Ember. No, it's level 9, I think. I don't know. We'll get Ember whenever we get Ember. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Do you want to know who I am? I'm going to be the world's greatest Pokemon trainer. Get out of my way. Oh, no. Oh, crap. Crap. That's my trainer card. Give it back. You saw my name. I actually didn't get to look at it. I'm just going to go ahead and name you something stupid like, I don't know, like Derek or something. <laughs> See what I did. Anyways, uh, we can grab this Apricorn. I always used to call them Apricots as a child. I still do call them apricots sometimes on accident. Anyways, there's a green apricot. Yeah. Oh, okay, so let's trek on back to the lab. And let's talk to this girl. Uh, do you see those ledges? It's scary to jump off of them. I actually have a pretty funny memory with this area right here. Uh, when I first was playing Pokemon when I was really young, my first Pokemon games were gold and silver, I believe. I think I had red and blue, but I was, like, nearly an infant, so I didn't know much. But... Um, I actually could tell a, I guess I could tell a story about that, but, uh, save that for another time if I remember to. Anyways, at that ledge back there, I was playing gold and silver on the playground with my friends. We were really young, and it's the first time I ever saw Apom, and I thought it was the coolest thing ever, and, <laughs> gauntlet. Anyways, I thought that was something really funny I should share. Anyways, I keep saying that. Why? Alright, we're back at the lab. And this police, police officer is like, Who are you? We are investigating the case of the missing Pokemon here. Rule number one, whoever did it will come back to the site. Oh my, so you must be the one who did it. And then there's this girl again, and she's all like, Hold on a second, he has nothing to do with it. I saw it. There was a red-haired boy looking into the building. Yeah, that's who did it. Oh, oh man, I'm so sorry. What, you battled a boy like that? He must be the one who did it. Did you get his name? So, the classic old, name your rival. So, if you are new, whenever I can name a rival my entire life, I have always named my rival the same thing after my best friend who also plays Pokemon, and his name is Derek. So, we have our rival, Derek. So, uh, if you saw what I did there, back there, it was pretty funny. Anyways, yes, his name was Derek. Thanks for helping with my investigation. My next assignment is to search for the red-haired individual. I'm going to move out now. Da -da -da -da. Oh, okay, awesome. Now Lyra's all like, Chroma, I'm so glad that you understand that, that you, are, you are innocent. See you later. Goodbye. Oh, uh, yeah. So I use the same voice for all the companion people. Like, I use that voice for guys, too. Like, <laughs> Lucas and Lun Lunic, if you saw the Ranger Let's Play. I, I, you didn't see it. I know you didn't. Anyways, <laughs> Chroma, this is terrible. Oh, yes. What's the, What was Mr. Pokemon's big discovery? And we give the mystery egg to Professor Elm. And he's like, whoa, this is an egg, isn't it? This egg must be something I've never seen. Still, it's just an egg. Mr. Pokemon has always been fascinated by eggs. Well, since he gave it to us, we might as well find out what secret it holds. I'll keep it for a while to find out about this egg. So, yeah. we And Professor Oak gave us Pokedex. Yeah, it's great. He's like, wow. I knew you were a, diff a little different. You should really take on the gym challenge. Go battle all the gym leaders and then challenge the Pokemon League and become champion. Yeah, that'll probably never happen. Yeah, yeah, it will. Dude, we already are going to be the champion. It's going to be great. But this Cyndaquil might not be with us forever. It's up to the game to decide that for us. So, guys, if you enjoyed this episode, a like is appreciated. It helps out a great deal. And if you want to see more Pokemon Nuzlocks, Wedlocks, or Pokemon Let's Plays, fidget in front of everybody like Gobi's doing. Anyways, I'll catch you guys next time. Thanks for watching.